Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to a Linux first impressions, and a lucky one at that. Ah, this week has been a horrible week. I think I spent 65 hours working. I left very little time to work on Linux. You know what they always say, the job's gotta pay the bills. So, it is late Friday night, actually, I guess it's early Saturday morning. <laughs> and this is Semplus Linux. Semplus Linux is a Italian-based version of Linux. Sorry for the hesitation. Mind was getting fuzzy there. <laughs> this is the 64-bit version that I downloaded. It is a lightweight uh, Debian-based distro on the unstable SID repositories. I have had a few weird things happen here and there on it. Uh, there are a few bugs when you deal with the unstable. You know, Debian usually is quite stable, but you have to remember if you point to stable repositories, you most of the time will get stable applications. If you point to unstable, you will sometimes get bugs and glitches and little things like that. One thing I would like to share with you, and I'm going to reach over here and grab my other computer, because when I was installing this, I found a very funny thing that happened to me. <laughs> I actually installed this a couple times because the first time I tried to install it, I was goofing around with some different applications, trying to get Simple Screen Recorder installed, ran into a problem or two, it broke some packages, that's what happens when you're dealing with unstable, and so I had to reinstall again, play with it. But when I was installing it the second time, and this is funny because it didn't happen the first time, but the second time, after it said that it completed successfully, and it was asking me if I wanted to reboot, then I get this pop-up when I said, yes, let's reboot. And it says, drunk people should not write software. Unfortunately, this is our case. We are sorry to tell you the installer for some reason crashed. <laughs> I thought that was quite a hilarious um, confession that drunk people should not write software. But I'm sure when you're looking at an open source package that you are not getting donations too often from that sometimes one must be drunk to write it. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was a little funny. Thought I would share that with you. <laughs> Simplest is using, I believe, the open box GUI interface. So it's a very simple desktop down here. We've got our icons, of course, with our date and time, our networking, and our sound and of in our SSR of course that we're using right now simple screen recorder gave me a little trouble in the beginning but then I learned to follow instructions you know those things that it says if you want it to work do this first and voila no problemo you know I don't remember in the past having to do some changes to the library files but for some reason, something in my head said, follow the directions, dummy. And I did it, and it worked wonderful. So we got Simple Screen Recorder up and running. We installed GUVC, as you see here. And I will give you a short, brief look. You know, since it is open box, it doesn't have a menu system down here. You right click anywhere on the desktop and you have your terminal and your web browser. Now the web browser that it comes with is Chromium and there are a few things with Chromium. I noticed for instance the API keys were missing and it gives me an error when I start that up. Easy to ignore and to continue on. One really cool thing though I want to bring up, I've mentioned this before in other flavors and I discovered this with Chromium I believe while trying out the uber student version that with chromium you can create shortcuts to 
URLs that act like applications. If you look in internet for instance you'll see add a web application and this is kind of neat because if you click on that you can give it a title, give it a URL, give it the size of the window that you want it to be and then tell it of course which direction you want to, to put that into. So I have created one for Gutenberg because I really enjoy the Gutenberg project. I want to see how it works. Now of course I didn't exactly know how big or small to make it so I just made it a little bit I think I just used something like 240 by 320 and so you see it just brings up this itty window which of course you can resize to any uh, size you want or you can even maximize it to the screen as such but the neat thing about that is that you can take things like uh, YouTube or uh, well like I did there the Gutenberg project etc and you can turn them into a simple application that it's really a web browser without the ability to change the location if you look inside of sound and video you see that they did have a YouTube application I thought oh they've got the CLI YouTube application but that's not the case this is actually if you click on it just opening up YouTube in the browser as an application using that same functionality we just told you about otherwise it has very simple applications just the bare minimum that you would need to get by um, the education one I of course added for Project Gutenberg just Tetris for a games nothing fancy for the graphics GNU Paint Mirage and the internet actually had the most stuff in there because it has the instant messenger it does have an IRC client and a few other application getters such as your mail and you get office just has Abbey Word you know nothing big no big applications and this one of course Excel for your music and I installed GUVC and simple screen recorder and then you of course have your system tools preferences etc etc now the one nice thing about this is of course it does come with the synaptic package manager and if you pop in your passwords you can install just about anything that you would ever want so in this case if you wanted something bigger than just the Abbey word you could look for LibreOffice and be able to find it quite simply click on it mark for installation and it would download and install now there are a couple of things about the installer that I want to mention because I liked what it asked about when installing it was quite simple it was, wasn't too difficult to follow but towards the end it asked about the repositories and it asked if it number one wanted you to find something closer to you and number two if you wanted to do some tests to find a better repository that pings the best for you that really helps out especially with a foreign distribution such as this because I remember when I did deepen that one of the first things I had to do was change that repository immediately because it was downloading at such a slow rate and it wasn't that intuitive to do until I kind of read a little bit of the deepen uh, wikis to find out that one should do that right away so it was nice that it offered that right up front another thing that was nice about the installation process is it asked if it wanted me to go or asked if it wanted the application to go out to the web and look for a newer version even though I had installed the current one there so that it could have the latest files and maybe a little bit better install and I did that the first time I didn't do it the second time just to see what would happen and because I didn't do it the second time I think I ended up with about 800 packages that needed updated for this particular flavor and it's not a very widely known flavor of Linux I decided this week uh, before everything kinda went south for work that let's just do a random distribution from the distro watch and see what we come up with and this is what popped up first and said yeah let's try it out I'd never heard of it never looked at it before and said wonder if it's any good and if you ask that question well DOS Gregor is it any good well DOS is it yes and no 
you know, like I said, it's got its little bugs here and there because it is based on a unstable version of Debian. But otherwise, it is nice. It's simple. If you're looking for a lightweight distro, I've reviewed others that I think may be a little better, but it's still workable and it's interesting. And if you're looking for something off that beaten path that works, but isn't so, oh yeah, everybody's using that distro sort of thing, then maybe Simplest might be something you'd want to look at. I'm very glad I was able to do this video for Simplest. As I said, my week was a hectic, difficult one for me for work. I'm glad I can get some content out there for you. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I always do everything I can to try to get at least something out there for you. And I appreciate your patience, especially such as in the last three weeks prior to last week when I just had so much. I was out of town and traveling so much. I just didn't have any chance to do anything. And the one thing I did try to do blew up, of course, and because I was just rushed for it. Lesson learned. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Bye.